Hello, smart friends, and welcome to day two of our Smart Cities Week podcast bonanza. In this episode of the Smart City Podcast, I had a really interesting conversation with Nicole Stevenson. She is a privacy consultant originally from Canada, but now based in Ipswich, Queensland. Nicole shares why privacy is such an important part of the Smart City conversation and one that is currently not being embraced enough across the board. We discuss how Australia is currently embracing the smart city concept and how we can still have data-driven and tech-enabled communities that balance the privacy and security of citizen data. Nicole explains some of the projects she's currently working on, including her role with the Internet of Things Security Institute, an Australian not-for-profit organisation in the privacy space. We also talk about data legislation in Australia and across the world, such as the GDPR, Europe's General Data Protection Regulation, and what it means for the smart city space here and abroad. Nicole explains the biggest mistakes that smart city projects or agencies make when it comes to privacy and why open data isn't actually in opposition, but can be enabled by privacy policy. We finish our conversation discussing the emerging trend of the changing views about privacy across different groups and generations in the smart city space in the context of the 2018 digital world. As always, I hope you enjoy listening to this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. It's the Smart City Podcast, whoa, with smart city experts, here we go. Connecting smart technology, both big and small. Smart cities are making life better for all. Big data, emerging trends, self-driving cars and more. The Smart City Podcast is what you're looking for. Hello, Nicole. How are you today? Good morning, Zoe. I'm well. Thank you. That's awesome to hear. Let's just jump straight into this. And can you tell us about your background and what you are passionate about? Well, for those who are listening that might be trying to identify my accent, I'm an expat Canadian. Um, I'm actually a Canadian. I've been a proud citizen of both Canada and Australia for quite some time now. And I'm a privacy expert. So my career started in Canada, almost fresh out of university. Um, But for me, it's never really become old. Uh, The bulk of my early career um, was focused on public policy and on privacy in a regulatory or oversight context. But these days, I really enjoy the more dynamic pace of working as a consultant. Awesome. In terms of passion, uh, in life, um, the greatest pleasure of mine is to watch my children grow and encourage them to become amazing, clever, confident forces in the world. And without a doubt, the feasting holidays are my favorite. I love Christmas and Easter and Thanksgiving. So it's a great thing that I also love cooking. Um, Work-wise, I have two areas of passionate interest, um, both of which I would say consume a fair chunk of my volunteer time. Uh, First is the privacy of children and the importance of minimizing their digital footprints during early life. And the second is ensuring that privacy and the protection of personal data in digital environments remains pivotal in the smart cities dialogue. So uh, that explains why I'm here today. That's awesome. I'm really um, excited to get into these questions and um, hear your thoughts and uh, your experience. So let's go into what sparked your interest in smart cities to start with. Well, because smart cities are uh, to a large extent about having and using and sharing data, uh, which includes the personal information of citizens within those cities, the concept has always made fairly loud pings on my privacy radar. My first inkling that smart cities would be a thing for me came when I was working for a privacy regulator. At the time, city councils were particularly concerned with public safety, and they were setting up extensive CCTV networks. Now, as a privacy professional, um, I thought that there was a lack of balance in the decision-making there because the privacy principles that govern the handling of personal information by cities, like a person's image and their location at a point in time, hadn't really been considered. So by looking at only the public safety angle and not at the issues that might arise from surveilling ordinary citizens as they went about their private lives, 
Um, I thought that the decision to implement CCTV was quite disengaged from the very communities that the councils were trying to protect. And I, I guess here, uh, the point is that privacy concerns are going to pop up, right, in relation to smart cities. And they're either going to be real, so where there's an actual risk, or they'll be perceived, and that's where there's a worry or a fear within the community. So in my professional experience, I think both have the real power to derail community trust. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, Smart cities are interesting, and they're interesting across the privacy profession too. And there's a group called the Future of Privacy Forum, and they they have something on their website, an interactive tool where they uh, illustrate the privacy concerns that are associated with smart cities. Uh, it's super easy to find on their website, and I do think it does a good job of making the concerns for professionals like me or anyone really quite digestible. Yeah, cool. We'll we'll put the link to that in the show notes so people can definitely click away and um, check that out. So tell us what a smart city is to you. I think they're great. I think it's an opportunity to improve. Um, smart cities are all about using the data of our of our urban environments and our citizens to make life better, right? More connected, more accessible, faster, cleaner, safer, and sustainable into the future. That's where the rub lies for me, though, right? Without adequate consideration of privacy, which for our cities, it's not, it's not just a normative matter, it's actually one that's based in law, um, then there's a real concern that privacy rights of citizens will be overshadowed by the desirability of using cost-effective, sparkly, data-driven tech. Well, I'm gonna, this next question, I'm going to flip it around a little bit. And I want to hear why you think the, the smart city concept is so important, but if you can actually kind of flip that and kind of why is privacy in the smart city concept so important? Sure. Well, first I'll talk about why I think it's important. The, the premise of the smart city is that it helps us leverage technology um, within our cities for social good, right? So sustainability, resilience, and equity. And that's really important when we're talking about foundational sectors where the community experiences pain points from things like mobility and transportation to their health or uh, infrastructure, um, energy, like know, water um, and electricity or finance. And I think that because so many large cities are struggling to meet the challenges of sustained urban growth and regional centers are struggling to attract external investment and drive prosperity or livability for their communities, smart cities offer an opportunity to improve lives. Privacy, though, is exceptionally important because it ensures that, I guess, by considering privacy, by considering privacy law, um, standards, best practice, it ensures that those making decisions in relation to smart cities have the full picture, that they understand we're not just dealing with data here, but we're dealing with data that's about a person in most cases. And because of that, the person is going to have expectations about what happens to that data over its life cycle, right? From the time that it's collected straight through to the time that it has finished being used and it's destroyed. Yeah, cool. So how do you think that Australia is currently embracing the smart city concept? Oh, look, I think it's in full swing. Um, Certainly conceptually, I think it's in full swing and that it's looking to some of the larger world centers now like Singapore for some guidance as we continue to move forward. Um, You know, I've recently moved from Brisbane to Ipswich, and I think it's great to see the traction that the city of Ipswich is getting in the smart city space. I I love the inclusive community-centered approach here. Um, There are buzzwords all around town about ideas and energy and innovation. Uh, Communities want to, in fact, I think they need to engage about how they live and how to make life better. So well done, Ipswich. What I'd like to see now, though, is a movement toward a model more like what we've seen coming out of Seattle, Washington, where the smart city is supported by the services of a person called a chief privacy officer. That's a critical role. And it's independent from, say, the ambit of a chief digital officer or someone like that. So there can be a great data-driven, tech-enabled community, balanced by the frank and fearless advice of a privacy professional who's embedded and who's concerned with the protection of citizen data in accordance with established privacy rules. Mm, Cool. 
I'm really keen to hear about some of the projects and things that you're currently working on, um, particularly, obviously, in the privacy space, but whether you're um, doing some stuff uh, with smart cities and privacy and making sure that that, you know, that the conversation is being had. Oh, absolutely. Look, I'm, I think the most relevant is that I'm, I'm working in a volunteer or pro bono capacity um, for a group called the Internet of Things Security Institute. And there I am their executive director for privacy and data protection. This is an Australian not-for-profit organization, and it's supported by some incredibly creative and dedicated people from all over the world. So along with making education and uh, educational and other resources available under Creative Commons, which is something I really respect in an industry that's largely driven by profit, um, the IoT Security Institute is in the process of developing a framework. And it's about the deployment of IoT tech, which naturally is going to impact the smart city space. And this framework ensures that data privacy and security are overarching considerations. So I would encourage anyone really to, to watch this space. I've also had some, some great opportunities to attend conferences and networking events where smart cities are topical. And I will be continuing to do so. Yeah, definitely. So, Nicole, I'm really keen for you to tell us a little bit about, you know, privacy and legislation and what that means for a smart city um, in Australia. I think it's important that I guess all Australian municipalities remember that they are required to comply with the privacy principles that are set out in the legislation that's relevant in their state. So, for example, here in Queensland, we have the Information Privacy Act 2009, uh, which captures local governments in Queensland. Uh, What that means from a practical perspective is that when cities intend to do something that involves personal information, so they say they intend to collect it, uh, deal with it in some way, analyze it and use it to make their cities better, they need to do that in accordance with the rules around how Personal information must be collected, used, stored or secured, uh, when it can be disclosed or shared and so forth. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's important to, in the smart city space, um, you know, it's about actually genuinely collaborating with all the right parties that need to be in the room and privacy, you know, privacy advocate slash privacy expert, um, someone working in that space definitely needs to be part of that conversation. Absolutely. Well, that kind of leads to this next question, uh, which is, how do you think that we can better integrate across the different disciplines? So, you know, the government agencies, uh, academia, industries, what kind of thoughts do you have in that space, particularly when we're, you know, talking about sharing data and doing projects together? Look, I think smart city, successful smart city initiatives will absolutely rely on an integrated approach. I think a key step is going to be to remove silos. So share stories, identify common issues and set consistent levels of public policy. Cities aren't going to become smart in isolation and nor will a vendor selling some cool tech to a city result in a general state of social good. But motherhood statements like that aside, um, as you would expect, my suggestions would tend to zero in on my area of expertise. So in both the smart cities and IoT spaces, I feel that tech is far outpacing critical thinking in terms of privacy. With smart cities, I do see a lot of play in the cybersecurity arena, as in how do we secure our tech and how do we secure the data we've harvested? However, I'd say the complementary privacy debate is still largely missing. Now, this does have the potential to isolate communities and consumers, right, our citizens, from view. And it obscures the fact that it's their information that the cyber gurus are working to secure. So speaking from the, uh, speaking to the competitive nature of almost all things, there is a tendency for cities to want to be first in terms of deploying technologies. But first, I feel they need to ask, what specific need does this tech serve? And then how are we going to ensure that the tech, vendors, infrastructure and policy environment that's in place will support the privacy rights of the people the city serves. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. I think we're going to implement smart tech or smart 
um, city slash smart community practices, it should be not oh, what tech is available, but what pain points do we need to solve? And then can technology help us to do that? And the answer can be no. Exactly. Right. You know, the answer can be no. It can be, oh, no, actually, we just need a, um, you know, an infrastructure mechanism or something. But I think it's actually about asking those questions. And I think that's where that um, vision for a smart community comes in. So it's not about, um, you know, what's the latest and greatest technology that we can implement, um, but starting with the community and the people and, um, you know, their needs, you know, number one. Um, I'm keen to hear your thoughts on the kind of uh, the biggest the biggest mistake that, um, you know, a smart city project or, or an agency makes when it comes to privacy. Mm. I would say that it's possibly about not recognizing that we have privacy laws in place that have established, I, I guess, the minimum benchmark that cities need to set in terms of protecting personal information through its life cycle. So that means that cities, at the time they are collecting personal information, through to the time they are storing it, through to securing it, um, and considering who they are using to do that job, um, through to sharing it. Perhaps there are vendors or analytics companies that want to have a look at that data to help the city understand it better. They still need to be looking at how privacy and the rules around handling personal information fit within that context. So I do think that that's a mistake. I, th I think that there is a lot of attention now being paid to um, who has the most sparkly tech, the most new tech, the most desirable tech. Let's bring that on board for the benefit of our city. There's a lot of attention being paid there less attention being paid to what is the need for this tech? Does it serve the community? Does it raise any privacy concerns for the community potentially? And have we engaged the community about that to find out their views? And how do you see um, open data and privacy? How, how is that interaction kind of happening? And is that something that, uh, you know, is a key issue that needs to be discussed because we all talk about open data which i realize is you know not um exactly the same but how that interaction how does that kind of happen i don't think open data and privacy are competing i think that they are they are different things and they each can be enabled by the other so for example if you if you look at privacy law in Australia, there are principles that relate to, say, an individual's right or ability to access their own personal information. Similarly, there are principles that relate to ensuring that information is accurate, complete and up to date before it's used. When it comes to open data and making certain information available uh, in a generic or de-identified form in order to benefit a city, doesn't really um, butt heads with privacy if it's done correctly. There are privacy laws as well as, um, you know, data accessibility um, laws that, that do, I guess, do allow us to have the best of both worlds. I do think, though, that it requires some consideration and an understanding of, for example, what is personal information um, to ensure that that information at a particular level of detail isn't made available for the world at large. Mm. And how does uh, – I'd also like to hear your thoughts on the um, GDPR and whether that affects Australia or whether we have the – we already had those type of privacy laws in effect. Okay. The GDPR is the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation and that – that's a really exciting development in privacy law from my perspective because it sets the benchmark really high for the collection and handling of personal information. It also relies to a large extent on the notions of choice and control being given back to an individual around what happens to their personal information. 
At the moment, the GDPR is focused on the European Union. However, it does have some some extraterritoriality issues that are being at the moment explored and tested, right? So here in Australia, we don't really have uh, a full understanding yet of the reach of GDPR and to what extent it affects businesses. And in this case, to what extent it's going to affect our cities. Um, Most certainly any cities that are dealing in cloud-based environments or have relationships or connections that are international um, may want to seek some legal advice about the reach of GDPR to them. Um, but as a privacy professional, I'm, I'm very much in a watch this space because I'm also watching this unfolding, watching it as it happens. Uh, for example, we're just now starting to see the GDPR uh, being tested from a regulatory perspective. And decisions that are made in that way will then impact how businesses go about uh, doing their jobs. They'll, you know, they'll tighten certain things so that they don't fall afoul of the law or the privacy regulators. Mm. Cool. No, thanks for sharing that. Um, Okay. The next question I have is what are the emerging trends that people aren't talking about enough? Data collection and sharing that's necessary for operating smart cities does raise concerns about privacy and security of community information, personal information, your information, my information. It's not as exciting as cool tech when it comes to a talking point though. So I find that the intersection between community awareness and engagement, privacy rights and information security gets far too little airtime. I'd like to see that change. And the smart city possibilities are, are considered endless. They, they probably are. But if we don't ensure that our communities are adequately informed about what's going to happen to their personal information, if they're not able to ask questions about it and be reassured in relation to what level of protection they can expect um, against data breaches, for example, then what have we really achieved? In terms of trends, though, I should probably note that there's an old school view about privacy, which is what's largely informed Australia's legislative landscape, right? So that's the idea that that we have a right to be left alone and that we have a right to engage in society with a degree of anonymity. Now, that old school view about privacy doesn't necessarily mesh with what we're observing as privacy in 2018 here in Australia. Right here at the moment, there seems to be this need for a level of online social connectedness And there's a definite preference for gadgetry that makes life easy. And there is a degree of fairly offhand sharing of personal information, such as, you know, when we fill out online forms so that we can uh, receive a service or buy a thing. And that says to me that many people are happy to supply their personal information in a circumstance where they feel that they're um, exercising choice and control. This is a shift. Um, in terms of community privacy consciousness. And certainly professionals in my industry are watching this with interest. And I do see this playing out in this smart city debate. Mm, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. It, it will be an interesting, it will be interesting to watch it all unfold um, as we move into this. And yeah, I think it's so important that privacy is, and security is a part of the conversation. And I think what you said about basically councils or, or not even councils necessarily, but people collecting the data, having that um, transparency in, you know, when people ask what that, what their data will be used for and having access to that, um, that they can actually answer that question, I think is a really important um, point. So, yeah, thanks so much for sharing. Um, it's been really awesome to chat with you today. Uh, I really just have one last question, which is um, how can people connect yes. with you? Well, um, I operate a privacy consultancy firm, um, which is now based in Ipswich. But I can also be found um, at the Internet of Things Security Institute, which is where, you know, you would find a number of great resources and other professionals that are operating in the IoT slash smart city space. So you can find me in both places. Awesome. Well, I'll put the links uh, to where they where people can find you in the show notes. And it, again, it was so great to chat with you. I love learning um, about different aspects of smart cities. So thanks so much for sharing everything, Nicole. 
Oh, thank you for the opportunity, Zoe. I look forward to talking again soon. Bye now. Bye. It's the Smart City Podcast. Whoa. Thanks so much for listening to the Smart City Podcast. Show notes for this episode and all other episodes can be found at thesmartcitypodcast.com. If you have any questions or comments for me or any of my guests, connect with me via email, zoe at thesmartcitypodcast.com or via the socials. I'm on Twitter and Facebook at Smart City Pod. As always, I hope you enjoyed listening to this episode as much as I enjoyed making it. Smart City Podcast is what you're looking for.